welcome to our Father's Day and third Sunday after Pentecost worship service at Greenwood United Methodist Church in Greenwood, Florida via YouTube. Today, we are celebrating a day honoring our fathers. Being a father is a great responsibility. What we do as a father will impact generations to come. Our children, they learn by watching us and they will one day become the type of parents that we are. Children learn by example. As best stated in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, train a child in the way he should go and when he is old, he will not turn from it. Let us pray. Loving God, you who are our father and our mother, we thank you that you have shown us how important it is to follow your example as we grow in faith. Teach us to be obedient to your will, respecting you as children all. Thank you for your mercy despite our disobedience. Strengthen us to stand up against the challenges of this world, honoring your name and trusting your name and trusting your grace. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Today, my message is coming from four different scriptures, four different scriptures. The first scripture is Romans chapter eight, verse one. Romans chapter eight, verse one. And scripture states, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. Second set of scripture coming from John, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. And scripture states, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And the third set of scriptures is Hebrews chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. And scripture states, this is the covenant I will make with them after that time, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their mind. Then he adds, their sins and lawlessness acts I will remember no more. And the final set of scriptures is coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And scripture states, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. My message today is titled Father's Day. Great fathers redefine. Father's Day. Great fathers redefine. Let's get into this message. Recently, I heard a story about triplets. Three young boys who got along pretty well. They saw everything alike. They were totally loyal to each other. If one got into trouble, they would not tell on the other. A neighbor asked the father, how in the world do you know which one to punish since they look exactly alike? He said, sir, it is quite easy. I just sent all three of them to bed without supper. And the next morning, I spanked the one with the black eye. <laughs> now, I do not necessarily share this method of determining the guilty party, but this I do know. Our God, our God is good. Our God is a loving father. He is a perfect father. His intention and his actions are never evil. They are never unloving. 
But believe it or not, this illustration has nothing to do with my message today. I want to begin my message by wishing all fathers a very happy Father's Day. I hope for those whose fathers are no longer with us that this will be a special time of fun memories and the sharing of pleasant stories. Most Father's Day's message would not be complete without sharing the story of how Father's Day began. You see, Father's Day was attributed to an American woman, Sonora Smart, who advocated the tradition because of her father. Sonora's father raised five children after the death of his wife during the birth of their sixth son. Sonora, the firstborn, and was 16 years old when her mother died. And so she helped her father to raise her brothers. And during this time, she grew to admire her father's ability, devotion, and love as a parent to gain spiritual insight. And on any topic, most Christians turn to the Bible. And today would be no exception. You see, the Bible presented the image of some memorable families and fathers. The first parents, Adam and Eve, had two sons, but one killed the other. Cain killed his brother Abel out of jealousy. While we do not know the ages of the boys when this event occurred, many, though, attribute the cause to the parents, and more so, to Adam, the father. And this is not the primary issue here. The point is, is that all human beings can be traced to this family. So let's briefly discuss a few more biblical fathers and their flaws. Lot, for example. Lot was Abraham's nephew. And the revival, and the Bible recorded that his two girls raped him, and they had children. They became the Ammonites and the Moabites in the Bible. As stated in Genesis chapter 19, verses 36 to 38, thus both the daughters of Lot were with child by their father. Their firstborn bore a son and called his name Moab. He is the father of the Moabites. To this day, and the younger, she also bore a son and called his name ben Ami. He is the father of the people of Ammon to this day. While Lot was not a strong role model, the Bible presented Lot as an obedient father to the Lord. When God told them to depart from Sodom and Gomorrah, he did not hesitate even though his wife was a different story. We also see that the girls turned out to be somewhat unusual. Although the reason why the girls went into their father was because as stated in Genesis chapter 19, verse 31, our father is old and there is no man on earth to come to us as is the custom of all the earth. You know, we do not know whether this was true, but that was their reason. Nonetheless, Lot was not blameless because the Bible made us to know that the girls gave him alcohol and he got drunk. Just as that stated, the descendants of Lot's first daughter were the Moabites, Ruth, the great-great-grandmother of Jesus Christ, was a, Moab, was a Moabitess. This means that Jesus Christ came from a weird family. Abraham, another example, was the friend of God. He had a wife named Sarah and had a children with his wife's maid. Yet, he was still considered a friend of God. The question is, what kind of father was Abraham? And then Isaac. 
Isaac had one wife, Rebecca, and he liked his own son Esau more than his son Jacob. He was a father that showed favoritism and the family knew it. Isaac did not look like a great dad. And then Jacob, Jacob was an unusual father. Jacob married two sisters. He had children with their maid. He also showed favoritism by loving Joseph more than the other children. And then David. David was a man after God's heart. As a father, he was an adulterer and a murderer. He committed adultery with Bathsheba and murdered Bathsheba's husband, Uriah. And then Solomon, mm, I would not go there, but I can go on and on. So what are you saying? What is the point of all these biblical examples of fathers? You see, you see today's dads and fathers, you fit into the picture nicely. If yours is the picture of what society calls normal, you are the abnormal one. You see, biblical fathers, our biblical fathers practice incest, adultery, fortification, polygamy, committed murder, and many other things. Yet many of them were considered men of God, friends of God, men after God's heart, and many other accolades were associated with them. So do not be under an illusion because I want you to know that great fathers are imperfect fathers. As we know from the Bible, Peter was a liar. Paul was a murderer. Likewise, Moses, the meekest man on earth, was a murderer. You see, the above examples are not very important. What matters is what is your plan, what are you planning to do from the day as a father? You know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of God's glory. Everyone, everyone has some type of skeleton in their closet. I know for myself, I have a graveyard in my closet. I ask myself, what kind of father was Sonora's dad? What, what type of father was he doing the first 16 years of her life? After all, it was not until she turned 16 that she was able to conclude that her father should be honored. But guess what? During the first 16 years, her father was not there physically. Like many fathers, many fathers, some are there physically, but not emotionally. Then the question, how on earth can Sonora still can campaign for an absentee dad? when though he was not a part of her life for 16 years? That's the question. But I want to debunk a notion for all dads. Understand this. Regardless of the type of father you are, there is nothing weird about you. Remember Lot. Remember Jacob. Remember David. Remember Moses and on and on. You are very normal. Even though your family and society might feel otherwise. And you may begin to feel that you are not normal. But Sonora, the young lady that advocated for Father's Day, did not honor her father because what he did or did not do in her first 16 years of life. She honored him because of what she saw in him after her 16th birthday. And because of what she saw, the shortcomings of the past were all forgotten. As best stated in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things 
have become new. Father, in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 16 and 17, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds. I will write them. And then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. And I repeat, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Fathers, dads, what makes you a good dad? It's not your past or your presence. If what you do from now on, what you allow Jesus to do inside of you. You see, when Jesus starts to dwell in you, a transformation will take place. You may be pondering, what can you do now? Where do I start from? How can I make a change? It is simple. It is simple. Just accept Jesus. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And not only will your old life go away, but you will be on your way to spend an eternity with God because the Lord our God will make you a new person in Him. A new person in your family and a new person in your community. And as stated best in Romans chapter 8 verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Jesus Christ. You who do not walk according to flesh, but according to the Spirit. So today, so today all you need to do is surrender your life to Christ. And if you have already done this, we pray that the Lord will make you who he wants you to be in him, who he wants you to be for your, for your family, and who God wants you to be for the world. Let us pray. Dear Lord, bless every follower with the best of your spiritual blessings today. Let him know he is not alone in the task you have given him to provide for and support those under his care. Show him how much you delight in his work and affirm the value of whatever you have given him to do. Confirm his word daily so he has no reason to doubt whether he is loved in the eyes of his heavenly father. Create in him a deep sense of trust in you, knowing that he can count on you, Lord, to lead him and to help protect him from dependence on others. Let him know that every unselfish act of love and encouragement he has offered has been a gift that you receive gladly. Show him how effective the prayers of a godly man really are and what a difference he has and can make to those around him. No matter how big or how small the assignment, when challenging times push him beyond his limits, assure him that you can take him farther into the realm of possible impossibility. Speak deep into his spirit the powerful words he longs to hear from you that nothing can ever separate you from God's love. Help him to grasp family firmly. Help him to grasp firmly the promises of your word. Standing with faith on the things you declare are true. Reward him for his faithfulness, past, present, and future. Assuring him that true success and satisfaction do not lie in his accomplishments or accolades, but instead in the steadfast Christ-like character you are forming in him. Demonstrate to him, Father God, your amazing grace and forgiveness as he seeks to love and to know you with all of his heart, soul, and mind. Release him, Lord, from unwanted burdens of false guilt and bless him for his willingness to keep short accounts with you, forgiving both himself and others. Help him to see his children through your eyes, realizing that in your hands is the safest place they can ever be. Strengthen his confidence and the only one who can bring good out of any situation. 
And dear God, Father, teach him. Teach him how to meet the needs of his child's life that are within his ability to do. But help him, Lord. Help him, Lord, to, to trust you for the rest. Push out any needless fears and grant to him godly wisdom and spiritual guidance to lead and direct those precious children in your pain, knowing that he must also release them in your hands with prayerful love. Lord God, complete any healing of past hurts or past regrets that may interfere with a father's ability to parent his children, build in him a sense of joy, humility, and playfulness that draws his family close. When plans do not develop as he hopes, or dreams are not yet realized, open his eyes, dear Lord, to see beyond this world to a greater joy that never disappoints, and to a father who will never leave or abandon him or his loved one. Merciful Father, give him a passionate faith, a persevering spirit, and a powerful testimony that overcomes any weaknesses or doubt as he wears the armor of God daily that you have provided for him as a spiritual leader and child of God. This Father's Day, this Father's Day, and for all the days of his life, the Lord, fill him with the best of your blessings. So that one day he will stand before you and hear your ultimate words of praise. Well done. Well done, my son. Well done. In Jesus' name, amen. Perhaps, perhaps my message touched someone in a special way. In a way so special that if you want to now give your life to Christ, then repeat this message with me. And I assure you that you will be saved. Just simply declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess your faith. And you are saved in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have made this decision today, we rejoice with you and are excited about your decision to accept Christ into your life. And now, dear God, Father, as I bring our Father's Day and third Sunday after Pentecost service to a close, remember this, God's love is from everlasting to everlasting, from generation to generation. Just as a father has compassion on his children, so God has compassion on those who fear him, who listen to his voice, and who do his will. Go out in the knowledge that the everlasting love of God goes with you. Amen.